Thank you, Ben. Well, thanks, Ben and William. I mean, the you know, <laughs> we're not worthy in terms of the events, honestly. You guys are absolutely fantastic with it. Um, so I've got 10 minutes. And yes, Ben did joke about Power BI, Synapse, how you're going to squeeze it all into 10 minutes. I'm really only going to talk about two small features that you can use with Power BI to improve the speed of your workloads when you're importing data into Power BI from Synapse, but also if you're connected controversially in direct query as well. So the session is turbocharging Power BI with Azure Synapse Analytics. So a little bit about me. If you scan the QR code, that's my Twitter. Uh, I'll post uh, a companion to this blog later, which is some of the scripts that you can use if you'd like to do this yourself. And I mostly blog at serverlesssql.com, which is all about Synapse Analytics, really, both serverless and dedicated. So really, it's very simple. We're going to talk about dedicated SQL pools. We're going to talk about serverless SQL pools, but a feature in each one of those pools that can be useful for Power BI. So the first thing in dedicated SQL pools, yes, that is the service in which you are importing data into a database. OK, not going to go into the nuts and bolts of dedicated, but you're importing data, loading data in to a dedicated SQL pool itself. Now, one of the features that we can use are materialized views, OK? Existed for a while. In dedicated SQL pools, these are particularly useful because if you're dealing with large amounts of data in dedicated, it can be very useful to pre-compute a data set that can be refreshed as new data arrives into those base tables. So really what we're doing, we're aggregating data for querying. The data is stored as well, so we do have to be mindful of how we distribute that data in the materialized view. But really the process is, I've got a couple of tables here. I've got a web activity table that I'm loading with telemetry for what's happening on my website. And I've got a date dimension table. I'm gonna create a materialized view to join those two tables together and aggregate based on some columns in each table. But when I load data into my web activity table, it could be real time, it could be batch loading. That materialized view is going to be updated as that data is being loaded into the web activity table or into the base table for the view. Now, with serverless SQL pools, we don't have the concept of materialized views. So is there a way that we can maybe pre-compute or pre-aggregate some data and make that available? Because the data for serverless is stored in the data lake, we do actually have a feature. It's called CTAS, okay? Create external table as select. Now this is a snippet from Microsoft, the best practices page for serverless SQL pools where they're saying, hey, why don't you use CTAS to pre-compute a data set? It can be a reference table, it can be a set of files, whatever you need to do, pre-compute that data and have it available for querying. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, in terms of the CTAS process, yes, we're still pre-aggregating data. We're saving that pre-aggregated data back to the data lake, and then we can use a view with a function called file path where we can actually just select the current data from the current folder, okay? So we're gonna load data into a folder in the data lake. We're gonna use the CTAS operation in serverless, which writes that data back to a folder, okay? Now this is a dynamic SQL process, okay? So every time you run the process, it's gonna create a new folder and load the data in. And essentially for connections, both serverless and dedicated have two endpoints. We've got a dedicated SQL endpoint and a serverless SQL endpoint. Okay, it's not just one endpoint to connect to, but we can connect Management Studio, Data Studio, Analysis Services, and in this case, we're connecting Power BI. So I'm going to turn into the demo. Okay, so we're going to bring Synapse 
studio up and I've got my dedicated SQL pool already up and running. I've got my date table and I've got my telemetry that's been loaded into the dedicated SQL pool itself. OK, now instead of issuing a SQL query at the time that I want to aggregate and join that data together, I'm going to create a materialized view to do that. OK, so I'm going to create a materialized view. As you can see, we still have to be mindful of distribution. That's how tables are created within uh, dedicated SQL pools. We have to choose a way to distribute our data. But I'm going to create that view. This will run for a few seconds. And we're just going to select the event counts to see how many events we've got. So we got about 2.4 2 million. OK. If I flick to Power BI, OK, we can see I've got a report that's connected to that materialized view. OK, so I'm just going to refresh and we've got 2.4 million events. That's what we've got. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to insert some th synthetic data. I'm just going to double the row counts in that table. OK. So I'm going to run that. Insert back into the base table that underpins. That materialized view. We'll run it for a few seconds. OK, we'll check the row counts. And we should see something in the region of about 4.8 million. There we go, 4.8 million. If we quickly refresh Power BI, okay, we can see that we've had a result in a couple of seconds. Now, if anyone's worked with dedicated SQL pools and Power BI, they know it could be a little bit of time to do some processing and return those results back to Power BI. We've had it in a very, very short space of time. With serverless, OK, we're going to flick to my view. I've already created a serverless database, OK? I've created a view over the data in my data lake that's at the individual row level. I'm not doing any aggregation, OK? I've also created an aggregate view, OK? So this is the view that I would like my resultant data set to be. OK, so I've joined to my dim date and I'm doing some aggregation based on the weekday name and the month and the event type. OK, now, yes, I can connect Power BI up to that view. I can run Power BI. Power BI will refresh the data based on that view, but it's going to run that query every single time it wants to do that data. Instead, we can use the CTAS process. OK. I'm not going to show you all of the store procedure, OK, but we want to concentrate on this part, OK, where we're creating an external table. Based on that view, we pass a view name in as a stored procedure parameter, and it's just going to run that view and output the data into the data lake. OK, so essentially I can create as many aggregate views as I want. And I can just pass that view in and ultimately all the store procedure is doing is it's just running a CTAS statement. And exporting the data to the data lake. So if we run that process. OK, take a few seconds. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the underlying storage after it's finished running. OK, we've got a folder in there. And if we refresh, there we go. So we can see we've got a new folder. OK, so every time you run that process, it's just going to compute the data set and output to a folder in our data lake. OK, but it also creates a view over that data as well. So if I open data minutes. We've got a pre compute current view that gets created as part of that process. So every time you run that process, that view will just pick up the latest data in the data lake. If I flick back to Power BI and open my data minutes, my specially created data minutes folder, I've got my serverless web analysis. Okay. And this 
is simply connected to that view which is pulling the pre-aggregated data from the latest folder. And that, ah, so thank you very much. As I said, I'll tweet out later an example to the code and you can have a little pick through and uh, look at the process yourself. There we go, thank you very much.